So we had a lot of fun with the last Dutch game, so uh, the students wanted some more. So let's go ahead and take a look at a wonderful game by Tartikauer. And it starts off with the most optimal move order to get to the Dutch because a lot of people avoid the straight f5 because there's a lot of interesting variations here for white. Um, I mean, e4, the Staunton Gambit, is, is very popular. Uh, knight c3 here on move 2 is a move favored by a Kobian. But uh, personally, I like the moves queen d3 and g4 here as the most interesting continuations to really shake things up. So d4, e6, you avoid all of these sidelines I just mentioned by playing e6, f5. But you do need to be a French player because after d4, e6, f4, you're facing the French. And Simon Williams talks about this in his... Uh, great series on the Dutch on chess.com. So moving forward, knight c3, knight f6, and a3 is played to prevent bishop b4. And normally in these positions you see d6, e5, but black elects to swap gears and go completely to a different plan. He plays d5 here and then c6, and here we have the characteristic stone wall of the stone wall Dutch. Knight e4, great square for a knight. Bishop d6, that's the optimal square in the stone wall because we're already starting to look towards kingside plans here. Arrows. So, b3, white's just trying to get developed, and black is, I want everybody working. Rook lifts. He's not afraid. Rook h6. Queen's now over there. We're going to break through. You tell this is all or nothing chess. If black's attack doesn't work, he loses. It's a different type of style, man. Rook 81, g4. Okay. Get ready for it. Knight takes, f takes. You can, you can sense... It's, it's going to come, and here it is. Rook takes h2. This is uncoordinating. All of white's pieces are there, but they just can't help with this situation. Knight f6, and he's going to need to get this rook into the game in order to put white away. There's another pawn. And it looks like white's consolidating. Looks like he's pretty safe. He can bring his rook over now. It's going to be defended by the queen. But knight h5. Notice black's just still in the developmental phase. He just wants his rook in the game. Check. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> Give me some of that. Do you want to trade queens here? No. You're attacking. Don't trade down your attackers when you're attacking. G3. He finally got his rook into the game. Now compare the pieces that are left. And it shows you the power of your pieces when they're most optimized compared to what White's pieces are doing. This is donkey. <laughs> this is pawn with funny hat. You know, they're not doing anything. Bishop e1. So at least he improved that guy. But then, like, it's like... I hate my rooks. Take them all. And after king takes e5, now there's a big threat with bishop h3 pinning the queen to the king. So king g1, but bishop g4 were attacking the rook and also threatening to go bishop f3. So white decides to go crazy here. Bishop takes, and after knight takes, he gets square for his rook. Knight f5 circling around. Would you like to trade queens? No, I would not. You're capturing a pawn. Check. Now you have two options. You can give me your queen and die in a couple of moves. Or resign now. And Maroxi, who is another legendary player in chess history had had enough of the devastating attack 
the beatdown that Tardy Coward put on him and resigned here. But you guys have heard the Maroxy bind in the Sicilian. Yeah, these guys in the you know early 1900s were real innovators of chess, having to figure things out. They didn't have the computers, the engines, everything we use now. So it's an important takeaway that uh, you know I may show you a bad game that they played, but everybody plays bad games. So all you can do is learn from it and get better. So hopefully you're learning from this one from White. And I'd say the main takeaway was that White was very accommodating in this game to what Black was doing. You needed counterplay. Without breaking things open, pawn levers, or a plan, this is what happens to you when you're facing a good player. You can get absolutely mauled if you're just making solid moves with nothing to back it up.